When it comes to movement, there's often this misconception in the body, really, misconception, that certain parts, that's, you know, maybe your discs or your, your joints themselves, especially the synovial ones, and the bone, there's a misconception that they have the capacity for shock absorption. So they take it on completely within that part, and it's it's dissipated within that part. So force comes in on one of these things, and then it is gone within that same structure. And we could argue that this is happening. It certainly is to, to some extent. And we could even say it's connected all the way down to a cellular level. So it could be, it could be taken entirely within that part. But many of the things we put our body through many of the structures we're supposedly dissipating or shock absorbing with really don't have the capacity to take on that kind of force, that extreme amount of force. And they're actually made in such a way to stop that from happening entirely. Let's start with a, a small example, quite, quite literally small example, in the form of our bone. It's specifically the compact bone. On the inside of this bone, this is a cross section by the way, we've got our spongy bone. Don't worry about that. But between the concentric layers, the circular layers of bone, there is a ton of collagen, little collagen fibers that run between these layers. And interestingly, one layer will go one way, and then the next layer after that, it will be organized in the opposite way. Let me just clean this up for a second and superimpose a much better version of this. So turns out we've got all kinds of different directions of collagen going back and forth and back and forth between these circular layers of bones. And so when it just so happens that a big kind of twisting force or a bending force comes in whatever direction, there will be layers of collagen to help support that. Meaning that even though the bone, which is a relatively brittle structure, even though that can't take on those types of forces. The collagen between will be able to stretch and essentially dissipate that force to take it from one layer through to the next, all the way through, and it'd be a lot more layers than I've drawn here, of course, but all the way through, slowly and gradually moving through the structure and making it non-damaging. And this is a great example of the small, but it's actually what happens in the bigger structures as well. And in fact, our safety, the security of the human body requires this. And it needs to transfer, just like it did in the bone, it needs to transfer from the small to the big and the big to the small, all throughout the entire body. So let's say, for instance, a big impact happens. I don't recommend this, don't get hit in the stomach, but let's say this person gets hit in the stomach. If it was too rigid, it would be isolated on a single spot. When it's not, it transfers through quite well. What we want, what we actually want, is for the body to do this kind of jackknife. This is a this is a hard hit. It's a it's a bad one. I don't recommend doing this. This is for, for science. We're obliterating this stick man here. Now let's say this happened, but it was concentrated just on a, a singular spot. It loaded up on one spot in particular. I'm gonna say in this case, it's like L4, L5, because we get a transition from you know an extension curve higher up as we go into more of a flexion curve lower down, not a big deal. So anyways, to complete the argument, if we wanted to concentrate it into a single spot, what we do is make it so that above and below are not moving. So these are vertebrae, lateral view, sagittal view, whatever you want to call that, and it's not moving above and below. So we've got rigidly fixed ligaments and muscles above and below. Because the force, the separating force, so we have an impact coming in the front, what should be a separating force like this actually stops. We don't have movement above, we don't have movement below, so everything is put back into the tissues between. And this is dangerous because those tissues, say we're talking about the interspinous ligaments or intertransverse ligaments, for instance, they can only take so much. They're tiny little ligaments. There's muscles there too. We could talk about talk about all of the interspinal muscles as well. They are tiny. They're not capable of taking that on. Should you concentrate it to one spot, more than likely what we're going to see is a rupture 
of the tissues will fracture the bone potentially, will break off that spinous process, will break off a transverse process, or will actually rip and tear through some of this ligamentous tissue, ultimately destroying it. This is catastrophic. It just can't happen like this. And it often doesn't. So let's instead say we take this hit to the stomach, knocks us back fairly far, and our body, ideally, jackknifes. Again, this is what we want to happen. This is what is a good result, believe it or not. Hard to believe. They obviously don't want to get hit, but this is the best of the situation. Now, what is supposed to happen, what happens in an ideal situation, is that as the body does this maneuver, it sends the applied forces, the impact forces, up and down. Even though we're getting hit here, we actually want it to end up going pretty much the whole way through the body, whether that's to the top of the head or the bottom of the feet as best it can. So what we have when it, when it operates more as a group like this, we get movement of many different segments. Again, the same kind of rules apply as we'll have ligaments in between all of the vertebrae and they have a certain amount of flex to them, there'll be muscles in between all the vertebrae. Now because we're getting hit from the front like this, it's going to want to spread in the back. It's going to want to open up in the back. That's what it should do. Now with this, as we move every single part, simply because it's not fixed, because it's allowed to move, unlike our, our isolated individual example, every time we have to move. So we move this guy back, Every time we move a ligament or a muscle, it takes a little bit of energy. So as those ligaments and muscles move, just slightly, it dissipates. It uses up some of the energy. It changes kinetic force into a different form. And as we, as we move other parts, as we move more of the column up and up, we spend more energy throughout the body. So nothing gets the full effect of the force. Nothing gets the full brunt of it, but we end up sending it higher up and lower down, and we end up using up that force, hopefully, before anything bad happens. Ultimately, it's starting to look a little bit like a hot dog there. Not bad. But we end up using that force up completely before it has a chance to fracture or rupture any tissues. And this is good. You know, hopefully you never get hit in the abdomen. Hopefully that never happens to you at any point. But the same relationships are happening all over the body at any level of force at, at any given time. It's actually designed like this from the small to the big and then back again. And this is why taking care of those connective tissues of the body, which is really all of the tissues. There's, there's nothing in the body that's not, a, that's not a connective tissue in a way, but that's our ligaments, our muscles, our fascias in general. That's why keeping them flexible and pliable is so important.